um, so every couple of weeks the Daily Mail run a story about one of my videos and they're always really nice articles that they write sharing the love letting people know what I'm doing so I can I guess help inspire other people to have a better relationship with their finances mm -hmm. but whenever they run these stories I get these really nasty comments by people who obviously were never told as a child if you've got nothing nice to say don't say anything at all anyway I'm actually a hyper hypersensitive person I get really upset I can stew over it it can eat away at me it can make me become really insecure but over time I've learned to become really resilient from this and I realized that if I stopped and listened to those people those trolls with these really nasty comments and opinions it would stop me making my video content which would then mean all the other people who are so nice so kind so supportive who do give me that constructive feedback <laughs> wouldn't benefit from these videos at all so um, thanks to my um, crazy friend here Candace um, <laughs> we're actually going to go through some of these comments and I'm going to share back my opinions my thoughts about what people are saying about me and I guess shed a bit of light on the truth behind my channel and who I am So Candice, do you want to okay. read some of these lovely comments out? <laughs> Step one, get a rich ex-husband and then screw as much child maintenance out of him as possible. And let me just say, screw is spelt incorrectly. But okay, continue. So if you're going to make yeah. a nasty comment about someone, I think it's really important to spell check and check your grammar as well. Yeah. Alright, well first of all, um, my ex-husband is not rich. Um, most definitely not. And uh, I have never received any alimony money from him ever. Um, I did receive a very, very small amount of child maintenance from him when we first separated, but I haven't... Oh, bless you. Bless you. Oh, oh. But I haven't received any money from him since, and to be perfectly honest, I would not want a dollar from him. Let me sum this up. Get a second job. Don't buy new clothes. Don't go out with your friends. Nothing new here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, um, I do spend money. You guys know I like you know, beautiful handbags. But I buy um, a lot of my stuff pre-loved. Um, if I need a new dress, I will go and search the second-hand economy through something like High End or eBay or any of the other beautiful um, websites to, to buy something second-hand first before I'll buy brand new. It's also so much better for the environment as well. Also, I go out and find ways to earn extra money. The thousand dollar project isn't about saving and depriving ourselves because that comes from a place of scarcity. There's only a certain limit you can go to when it comes to saving. But if you flip the other way around and look at what you can earn, what other things can you manifest, what other extra jobs you can take in, little side hustles, things that you can like sell, like selling like things that are cluttering your home or things you don't love values and appreciate anymore that's a way of bringing in some extra money into your life and it's how I've been so successful with doing the thousand dollar project get in the Daily Mail's pocket to flog your book slash course slash whatever <laughs> um, thanks I'm not really in the Daily Mail's pocket I'd say they're probably in my pocket because they just grab my videos and randomly like write stories about them which I'm incredibly grateful for them to do also um, what am I vlogging um, my YouTube channel is free to watch um, <laughs> I make my YouTube videos in my free time for people to watch so I don't think I'm vlogging anything yes I've written two books yeah. But the Daily Mail audience isn't my audience, and I make $2.10 per book I sell, so I've got a lot of flogging to do if I'm using the Daily Mail. I stayed on weekends with a friend and rented my house on Airbnb. Quiet weekends at home. She has a rich new boyfriend or fiancé, basically. <laughs> Alright, so Physio Tom is really hard working. And also the physio for Winx. Yes. Uh, well, what? Yeah, Winx is now retired. Yeah, yeah but still, yeah. he actually still looks after Winx. Tom isn't rich. Um, 
I'd, it'd be nice if he was rich, but he's not. He is incredibly hardworking, and yes, he does very well for himself because of his hard work, but like me, he works for himself, and he is very smart and wise and responsible with money. I'll definitely give him that, but we're actually financially independent of each other. Um, he has his bills, I have my bills. Separate uh, bank accounts. Separate bank accounts. However, we are in the process of um, combining our finances, setting new financial goals together, and working together as a team, which is really important, um, that we're all on the same page together, and it's something I'll be doing some videos around, and of course, because we have baby Apple now together, so it does change things. But um, no, my boyfriend is not rich, and um, I definitely do not rely on him for any type of financial support either. We can vouch for that here in her office. <laughs> okay. Mum and Dad paid the 36k and then paid the Daily Mail to run the story so their precious daughter could be somebody. Um, I would be lucky if I got $3.60 out of my parents, let alone $36,000. That's not to say my parents aren't generous or, or kind, that's quite the contrary. However, my pa the reason why I'm smart with money is because my parents said no to me um, when they needed to. And um, because of that, that then then created me to, and forced me to step up and do things for myself and find ways, find solutions, learn how to hustle, learn how to save, learn how to make more money, earn more money, invest money. If my parents had given me $36,000, I wouldn't have that, that get up and go. In fact, they'd probably be holding me back in life if they'd given me money like that. And um, as a financial advisor or financial planner technically, I definitely wouldn't recommend giving $36,000 to the Daily Mail. That would not be a great return on your investment. <laughs> Anyone who can save $3,000 a month is hardly poor. Try the same savings when that's your total pre-tax income. Then come back with your national newspaper advert for your business. Um, once again, I wasn't saving $3,000 a month. I would really like that. Um, I have a mortgage, so I couldn't afford to be doing, saving $3,000 a month. I went out there and found ways to earn extra money. And it wasn't $3,000 a month. There are months where, I, yes, I did really well, and then there are months where I didn't um, earn extra money. Um, I did so many different things to bring in extra money. I did market research. Um, I decluttered my home and sold things to the second-hand economy. Um, yes, there were some savings things where I slightly adjusted my lifestyle, but I have to say, back then, my budget was so tight anyway. There was no way I could possibly have done that. I pretty much earned that money through hard work, through sacrifices, giving up my spare time, learning to say yes and also learning to say no. I earned that money. It was not savings. So she saves all that money to just blow it on handbags. <laughs> Um, again, someone who clearly is very opinionated without knowing all the facts and figures. Um, no, I never blew the money on handbags. I gave the money to charity. The passive income from the $1,000 project has always gone to charity. Um, the first charity was the Gidget Foundation, which supports women with postnatal depression and post-traumatic stress syndrome, which I've been really transparent in experiencing myself, so it's something really close to my heart. Round two of the $1,000 project, the money was donated to an orphanage in Jakarta. Then round three, which was just under $5,000, um, the money was donated to Rise Up Australia, which supports families of domestic violence. So um, no, none of that money went to handbags at all. And that is money that came out of my own pocket, which I donated to charity because the passive income is growing every year and it's reinvested back into the portfolio to help inspire you guys to not think about so much saving, but also think about saving and investing because that's how you build real wealth efficiently. So there was actually a comment that alluded to the fact that Hannah is a prostitute. Nothing wrong with being a prostitute, but no, she's not a wrong. prostitute. No, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> so the first comment said, "I do wonder how I'd go if I was. <laughs> 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 Would I be any good? I need to ask my ex-boyfriends." Or 
Tom. Or Tom. I could ask Tom. I mean, I'll ask Tom for you. Ask him and say, how would I go? How would you go? I'll ask him how you are. Should I call him now? Yeah. Okay, let's call okay. him. <laughs> Just hopefully he'll answer. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi, Tom. <laughs> We're laughing at something. Um, I have a question for you. Like, how would I go if I was a prostitute? Yeah. How is she in bed? Uh, depends where. Oh, 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 oh. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I tell you what, honey. You've got to. You've got to No one's in the car, I just sit at home. You just sit at home? Yeah. Yeah. Where's this conversation going? No, because someone on the, on the Daily Mail tried to, like, um, I guess... Well, she said, why is Sugar Mama posing on her bed? Part of the saving plans, maybe? And then someone followed up. It was the source of much of her money. The profession is always cash in hand and involves entertaining from home. And then someone else followed up and said, this is her overtime work. So I think they were alluding that I was a hooker. Hooker. <laughs> You're going to have to be a lot more submissive in the bedroom. <laughs> 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 oh, I'll say. Oh, you, were, you were complaining the other night. Oh. When I get a, you know, like, you try to get a bit rough, never Oh. <laughs> oh my god! I, look, well, I, you get a bit precious. You get a I get precious. precious. There's some constructive feedback <laughs> for me. Well, well, I'm saying if you want to take up that profession, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's incredible. What is wrong with these people? Um, I, I would engage in a funny way if you want to engage, but just say, um, um, Something along the lines of, I certainly wouldn't be making um, videos for no pay if, if that was a professional <laughs> job. You know I mean? like, I'd be making a different type of video. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Videos. yeah. It would be, be, be Sugar yeah. Mama of the erotic variety. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it would be, I would just say, I can assure you to be a $100,000 project if that was the case. <laughs> That's oh, I'm honey, am I worth $100,000 in bed? Now we're getting a little R rated. Okay, honey. I, all right. Thank you very much. Now, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you realize that it's important to be strong and resilient when it comes to trolls, when it comes to haters, when it comes to people who just aren't very nice. And remember, it's more about what's going on for them. They're the ones that are unhappy. They're the ones that have things going on in their life that they're not coping with. So you need to feel sorry for those people and rise above it. Focus on your own strength, your own resilience and continue on doing what you do best and helping make this place a better world.